Hi, it's Stacy from Tamarack Nature Center, part of Ramsey County Parks. This week, we are gonna look at what we can eat from nature. And we'll also, later this week, give you some awesome recipes and how to make them. Very simple, so that you can try more plants from nature. So, plants. Why are they important? Well, they're very important for a lot of reasons. They're parts of food chains, they give us shade, they give us biodiversity. But in terms of food, if you're someone who doesn't eat a lot of veggies or fruits, which I encourage you to do, are they that important? Well, think about it. What if you are somebody who likes to eat bacon or pork chops? Those come from a pig. What does the pig eat? The pig eats plants. What if you like to eat bison burgers or um, a, a cheeseburger from beef, from a cow. What does the cow eat? What does the bison eat? Well, bison, they eat grass. Cows, if they're free range, they'll eat grass and corn and other grains. So even if you don't like a lot of fruits and veggies, if you eat a lot of meat in your diet, they eat plants. So plants are super important and they are the, the basic um, building blocks of our food chain. So plants, Fruits and veggies, herbs, where do they come from? Well, gardens, of course. Maybe you grow them in your own garden, in your neighborhood, in a community garden, or your backyard, or a pot, some potted plants on your deck. But how do you get them if you don't grow them yourself? You gotta go shopping. Do you go to the grocery store or a co-op? Do you go to the um, local food shelf? Which, by the way, major kudos to the, all the staff that work really hard here at Tamarack, we donate a lot of food to go to the White Bear Lake food shelf. So you can get food at food shelves. You can also get food um, at co-ops uh, and also the farmer's markets. Right now, farmer's markets are bustling with a variety of veggies, fruits, and herbs for you to enjoy. And it's a great fun experience to go just to find out all the different things that are out there and try the different colors that are there and you're gonna probably find some things you've never seen before. So speaking of trying new things, I've got a couple platters full of veggies and fruits and we're gonna figure out what parts do you really eat? Do you think you only eat the roots or the leaves or the stems or the seeds or the buds? Hmm, let's check them out and see what you actually munch. We'll start with some of the buds. Some of the buds, here's a tricky one. This is actually, these are all buds, believe it or not. So cauliflower and broccoli, you're actually eating the buds. Unless the broccoli stem, the stalk that I like to eat, I like to peel the edges and slice it up for stir fry, then you're eating the stem. But the cauliflower and broccoli are the buds. Now, a not so popular bud that some of us like, I like it when you roast it with garlic and olive oil, there are these cute little buds that get a bad rap. Brussels sprouts. In French, they're called mon petit chouchou, my little cabbage. <laughs> and these are actually buds. You're munching the buds, baby cabbages. So, fruits. You might think, Fruits, well, you know fruits, of course. Nectarines, apples, pears, bananas, fruits, right? Well, I've got some other things here on my platters that are fruits. Do you see them? Hmm. Well, fruits, botanically speaking, or plant science speaking, fruits are the housing for holding and carrying the seeds. So like, for example, Inside a nectarine or a, a peach, there's a big pit. That's the seed. The fruit part that we like to munch is actually the tasty covering that holds that seed. Now, what has seeds in it? Oh, tomatoes have seeds, right? Tomatoes have seeds. You usually eat the seeds too. What else carries seeds here? Ooh, one of my favorites this time of year, sugar snap peas. They've got the seeds that you can eat and you just get a bonus of eating that sweet covering. So these are actually fruits. The pod is actually a fruit. 
Are we missing any others? Oh, peppers. Peppers, these are holders or houses for all these little seeds. A lot of times you cut the seeds out unless it's from a spicy pepper. But we've got a bunch of fruits here. Okay, what category would a little zucchini, summer zucchini squash, or a cuke fall into? Hmm, is this the stem? This looks like it kind of comes off the stem when it grows, but actually both of these are fruits. They've got the seeds all inside of them and you're just happening to eat that crunchy house that's carrying those seeds. So we've got a whole lot of fruits, believe it or not. You eat more fruits than you think. Now, leaves. Leaves. Do you eat any leaves? If you're a good salad eater, you eat a lot of salads, you eat a ton of leaves on lettuce, but there's also some other leaves. Maybe spinach. Those are great leaves. You can throw a bunch of them into a smoothie. You don't even taste it. You get a little boost of some iron and vitamin C. What other leaves are there? Ooh, fragrant herbs like basil and sage. We eat those leaves, whether they're dried or fresh for pesto or on cooking. Rosemary, these leaves, when you rub them, it releases those fragrant smelly oils. We eat those leaves. Hmm, how about these long skinny leaves? These long skinny leaves, recognize these? Chives and garlic chives. You can eat those leaves as well. What about, hmm, recognize these? They're thinner than you'd normally see at the grocery store or the co-op or the farmer's market because they're just newly growing. This is baby celery but the tippy top is the, the leaves. You can actually eat celery leaves, believe it or not. And then these here, these are moving into the stems. So if you're a, bot uh, a botanist, these are called a petiole, the leaf petiole, which is a special name for a leaf stem. So you can eat the leaves and the stems on celery. What the heck about onions? What in the world? So this part up here looks a lot like the chives, right? That's a leaf. You can eat the leaves. You can eat just the ends, chop them up, put in your salsa and your, your dips. What is this at the bottom? Is this a root? Is that a fruit? Did the seeds grow in there? No, the seeds grow at the top when you get those purplish flowers. This at the bottom is actually a specialized, swollen, big, thickened parts of the stems. So you're actually eating leaves and stems. This is not the root. These little hairy parts right here, those are the roots of the onions. Now, roots. Where are the roots? Oh, forgot one. It was right under my elbow. What is this? Think of any special treats? Rhubarb crisp maybe? Rhubarb sauce? You get to eat this part right here, the petiole or the specialized leaf stem, but you don't want to eat those leaves because those leaves can, are, can be poisonous if you eat the leaf part. So just the stem on the rhubarb. Okay, what's left? What do we have left here? Hmm, roots. Well, we've got some interesting looking roots. This one, ooh, if you like things that are crunchy, spicy, and a little peppery or a lot peppery, go for the radishes. Some of them are even like candy stripe that are peppermint color, red and white striped around. Trim off the little end, slice them up for a salad or dip them. So you eat radish roots. What are these roots? What is this? Is this just a chubby, short, fat carrot? It's not. The tops are different. The bottom's different. These two are both beets. They just are different colors, golden beets. They look kind of strange, don't they? But when you roast them or cook them, this outer covering comes off and you can eat them or pickle them. Some people actually will eat the leaves and that leaf stem or petiole too, put them in a salad. They have kind of a strong flavor, but people like them. So we've got roots. What is this big white root? Hmm, wait a minute, is it a turnip? I think it is. Turnips, they grow under the ground, so they're truly a root. And the root is where these happen to have really exaggerated large roots that hold a lot of starch and a lot of energy, a lot of carbohydrates. 
So you can take them. Shannon likes to cook them and she likes to mash them up with her mashed potatoes for an extra special twist on them. So we've got turnips too. There's something else up here that I bet you don't know that you eat. You're not a beaver, are you? But you do eat some bark if you ever eat cinnamon. So these are cinnamon sticks. Cinnamon sticks are actually rolled up dry pieces of bark from cinnamon. And it's so fragrant and flavorful, it gets super hard, like I can't even break this. So you take it and then you get a grater and you shave off the little powdered end and that's what you do. There's also, we haven't talked about nuts and seeds, but another thing that goes in some of the same baked goods as cinnamon, nutmeg. This is what nutmeg comes from. And you take this whole hard nut, which I cannot break, and grate it as well, and then you will have nutmeg. So as you can tell, you eat more parts of plants than maybe you think you do. Now, in later on this week, you're gonna get some great, simple, do-it-yourself recipes to try some different plants and different plant parts, but there are a lot of them you can eat just raw and plain. Before you try something, there's some things I want you to do. I want you to make sure you use your senses, use your eyes, try to see what part of the rainbow things are. Like, it's fun to try beans that are purple instead of yellow or green. Rub it, sniff it, and then you can take a mouse nibble. You don't have to take a big bite, just like a mouse nibble. I made a little platter of some dips. My daughter loves dipping things. Pick some dips you like. I picked blue cheese, ranch dressing, and hummus. Take a little dip, take a mouse nibble, see if you like it. So I challenge you, these weeks coming up this summer, go find some more plants, think about what parts you eat, and try some new things. Thanks a lot, and take care.